Okay, here's an example of a rational inequality. We have a rational expression, a fraction basically, and an inequality. And when I see this, this is how I think about this problem. This is what goes on in my head. I see one thing divided by another because the fraction bar means division. So I'm going to write this down because this is the key logic that allows me to solve the problem. One thing divided by another and then look at this. Less than zero, that means negative. So I think something divided by something is negative. So one thing divided by another and the result is negative. That's what less than zero means. And it's actually less than or equal to be equal to zero. So I can say the result is negative or zero. Okay, but here's the thinking. How do I take one thing and divide it by another and get an answer that is negative? Okay, anything. If I have one thing divided by another, that will be a, a negative result if one of those two things is negative and the other is not. That's the only way to do division and get a negative answer, is to have one of the numbers be negative. So I could either have the top one be negative and the bottom positive, or the other way around. So I can simply spell out all of those logical possibilities. I could have x plus 3 is negative, less than 0. And then the bottom here, x minus 3 would have to be positive. x minus 3 is greater than 0. And this is actually a less than or equal to. The result could be 0, remember? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make these uh, less than or equal to as well, and greater than or equal to. Okay, but this incorporates this logic. I could have the numerator negative and the denominator positive, or it could be the other way around. I could have the numerator x plus 3 is positive, and the denominator x minus 3 is negative. And again, I'll include the equals sign, not just greater than or less than, but also the equals, because my original problem was stated that way. It could be, could be equal to 0. Now, this gives us four little equations here, or four little inequalities, which are very easy to solve. This first one here is just like saying x is less than or equal to negative 3. And over here, we have x is greater than or equal to 3. Now, let's picture that on a number line. If here's 0, and here's 3, and here's negative 3, where are all the numbers that are less than negative 3 and greater than 3. Well, numbers less than negative 3 are over here to the left, and numbers greater than positive 3 are over here to the right. But there are no numbers that are less than negative 3 and greater than positive 3. You cannot meet both of those conditions at the same time. So we don't get any answers from that information, but we will from this. Let's work out these two. This one here, x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. That's just like saying x plus, it's like saying x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And this is like saying x is less than or equal to 3. I'm going to scoot this down just a little. Okay, so where are all the numbers that are greater than negative 3 and less than 3? Well, that's all the numbers in between negative 3 and 3. Any number in there is greater than negative 3 and less than 3. So you might be tempted to graph it like this and put a square brackets there because it's a less than or equal to in our original problem. But there's one catch right here. Be careful. Look at the original equation. See that denominator? x cannot be 3. If you put in a 3 right there for x, you end up with a 0 denominator. So x equal to 3 is not allowed. So I'm going to use a parentheses here on the right to indicate that that value is not included. And I'll use the square brackets on the left. So my, my graph looks like this, my solution. And if you wanted to write it algebraically, you could say negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 3.